somewhere deep inside. Chuck hasn't gotten enough of hearing that yet, and he's dying to hear it again. So, Chuck, this is for you, buddy. Welcome to the show, everybody. The Body Slam the Competition, our recap show of the Fast Lane pay per view. <clears throat> my name is Chris Adams, and I'm just going to go ahead and take a side seat here and let my two companions here who want to run it down <laughs> talk the rest of the night. <laughs> Guys, come on in. Charles. 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 Yes, yes, Miguel. On, yes, a, Miguel. on a scale, on a scale of of horse shit to elephant shit, what? How much shit was tonight's pay per view? Um, I'm gonna go platypus shit because it was a mixed bag. It was a mixed so, bag. It was some it was funky mixed, shit too. Um. Oh my God, where? To begin, I, I well, just don't even know. Chris, Chris, start us from the yeah, beginning. Yeah, let's I, start I, I with the say first one, match. Of the, let's not even I, talk about the pre-show. Fuck the pre-show. Right. I didn't even, all I didn't even watch the pre-show. I, I saw the pre-show. It was a 205 live match. It was fair. It was decent, but it wasn't you know the pay-per-view. I, I, I will start off by saying I was not uh, disappointed per se with the pay-per-view, but as me and Mike were talking a few minutes ago, uh, the last two pay-per-views outdid it by far. Um, it was not exactly the greatest pay-per-view in my eyes. Uh, I was a little disappointed in the squash match. I told you guys before, I hate squash matches. I was kind of hoping to see KO keep the belt and have Lesnar come out and screw things over with. But let's start with the top match that happened, the very first match. We got Samoa Joe coming out against Mike's hero, Sami Zayn, El Generico. In a match that um, we kind of figured we knew how it would go, but um, it, you know, Sami Zayn put on a decent fight for a minute, but Samoa Joe really dominated most of the match. Oh yeah, um, Mike, I'll give this one to you. You go first, Mike. I'll be nice. Oh, why? why thank ahead, you, Mike. sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, no, nope. um. stepping, aside, stepping aside. Uh-huh. Well, okay. So let's face it. Sami Zayn's about as entertaining as trying to watch a. I don't know, uh, a eunuch try to beat off. So, I hate Sami Zayn. I like Samoa Joe, but I'm not a huge Samoa Joe guy. However, I will say this. The match was decent for what it was. But it just seemed boring. It seemed, I don't know, like maybe Samoa Joe was holding back. Hmm. I, uh, I, yeah, I. Here's the thing. I feel the same way about Dan, Sammy Zane. First of all, I don't like when people try to do the like the, the the bug eyes and the hulking up and all that other bullshit that they do. I mean, even even Gallagher did tonight. So that annoys me. That's one, and and he does that in spades. Two. I want El Generico. I just think he has more personality with El Generico. He gets to be himself. He gets to do... I mean, if this is Sami Zayn and this is who he is, then I want somebody else. Yeah, he's um, tough. Yeah, I just, I just do. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, now, honestly, I mean, I agree totally, Chuck. He's the kind of guy that, good, that couldn't get laid in a $5 whorehouse with a $20 bill. Yeah. If you if you met him and he had on a very nice shirt and everything else, you think he's like an accountant or IT or something like that. He doesn't stand out. A guy like Samoa Joe walks into the room and you're like, what the fuck does this guy do? You know what I mean? Now let's face it, Samoa Joe it should be called Samoa Taz. That's just mm-hmm. the way it is. But, oh. But but mm. but but he's. A lot. He he offers a lot more than Taz did. Yeah, about three I just more feet. Think, yeah, that too. <laughs> um, but I don't know. I don't know. Like, it's a weird thing. What are they going to do with him? He's going to be the destroyer. Okay, they already have a destroyer on the roster. His name was Braun Strowman until tonight. Um, that's a whole nother. Uh, no arms. jumping but, ahead. No jumping ahead. But, uh, I'm just, I just kind of just wanted to throw that out there a little bit. My thing is, um, Samoa Joe. I hate to say it, if Samoa, if Samoa Joe was here five years ago, he'd have made a bigger impact. 
he hasn't made an impact. He's just a guy who's kicking ass. There's a difference. There's just there just is. You know, I so, don't know. So I, I I take it that the two of you are not fans of what a lot of people out there refer to as the generic cab guy look that Sami Zayn has going on today. So, which leads me up to our next match and my next question about you two, and uh, which is, what do we got here? A cup of haters? Huh? Oh, please don't huh? ever do that A again. A cup of like, haters? I mean, come I like, on. It's like when, wait, What's listen, wrong with you guys? Like, no, listen. It's like non-Italians trying to speak like that <laughs> North Jersey, you know what I mean? Like, stop. Please stop. Be, okay, be, I can okay, do it. You guys can do it. Hey, look, it'd be, it'd be uh, like, you know, with me coming out sounding completely Mexican or something to say it when I say it. Uh, anyway, wait, the, the, see, the whole... Did, go, ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. You first. No, seriously. Go, go, ahead. go ahead. No, I'm saying, uh, you ever see My Blue Heaven? Yeah. You ever see that movie? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just like that. Are you trying to say... <laughs> <laughs> are you trying to say Capiche? Don't do it. Because when you do it, it hurts my ears when you do it. That's exactly how it is. No, but anyway... Go ahead, sir. Uh, it, I mean, Sami Zayn, I tried, you know, I, each week I try to stand up for him for you guys. I know you guys don't like him very much. And like you said, you like him better as El Generico. I, I, to me, I mean, he's got some good qualities about him wrestling-wise, but he is plain, though. He's just plain. And it's hard to get into somebody who's just plain Jane out there on the screen when there's nothing that's really exciting about them anymore. When he was in NXT... I never thought he was super exciting there either. But, I mean, they made something big out of him and KO with each other. Then when he came into Raw, him and KO had picked back up again on those fights. It was kind of exciting to watch those two go out. They had some good matches with each other. But those two seemed to pull the best out of each other, it seems like. Put him with anybody else yeah. so far in the ring, and there's no magic there with anybody. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I try to stay on the positive side of him, but he makes it really hard to make a case a lot of the times for him. But leading up to the second match of the night, I will not mm-hmm. do the impersonation again. I promise, even though I am a certified G and a bona fide stud, I will not do. I will not. I will not say the cup of haters remark again. My Somebody favorite lied. right now. My favorite yeah, right now, which is the club that you guys can't stand for some reason, uh, oh. went over. <laughs> <laughs> went over on Enzo and Cass tonight. And I honestly thought for a second that they were going to go ahead and push Enzo and Cass tonight at the end of it there and uh, go ahead and put the belts on them. For, uh, and it looked like they had it up there for just a second uh, until nope. uh, Gallows pulled him, uh, pulled Enzo out of the out of the ring off the, nope. you know, the, the cover. No, but uh, I knew it wasn't. The match, I knew it. Yeah, yeah. The match itself was all right. I mean, it wasn't uh, the best. Once again, as I said earlier, it wasn't the greatest pay-per-view. Wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. This was just an okay tag match between the two. Nothing spectacular. Nothing I will stood say out this. to me. So I mean, Mike this was probably was one of the best. Of the match. Well, this was probably one of the best matches Enzo and Cass have had, it, as far as Enzo is concerned. Oh. Right. Uh-huh. He did. He was. He was very solid tonight. And uh-huh. he, I really didn't see him botch much of anything. No, Unlike he, some he, other he, things let, later in the night happened, we had some big botches tonight. Well, oh, yeah, we'll cover those for sure. Don't go ahead. Don't go ahead, Mike. Don't go ahead. I didn't, I, I didn't mention don't any ahead. particular match or name of anybody. <laughs> Unlike yeah. my my esteemed uh, colleague here, uh, Mr. Mr. KJ. I don't know what you're talking about. But it was, like you said, Chris, it was, a, it was a mediocre tag match as far as tag mm-hmm. matches go, but it was probably – one of Enzo's best matches. So he gets the yeah. gold star. Everybody else gets the bronze. Yeah, these, I agree with that. I agree with that. I was going to say that this is as far as Enzo and Cass, because I've never seen a, a, a quote-unquote good <laughs> match. I see a good, like, entrance, but I never really see a good match, you know. Um, and that's not that's not Cass's fault. I, if I see one more person say Cass can't wrestle, can't – he moves for a big man. What do you want him to do? Like, he I don't understand what. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I think he can wrestle. Um, do I think he could do crazy moves and all that? No. I think he does what he's supposed to do, and he think he does it well for a big man, and he he moves well. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, they weren't going to put him over. 
they they might put them over the next uh, next pay per view. That may just happen. You may just see Enzo and Cass new champs. Well, they got to eventually. WrestleMania. Yeah, they're gonna do it at WrestleMania. They weren't gonna do it tonight, and I knew they were. I was I was I was gonna be shocked if they did because I was like, oh my god, look, they they're doing that. And then I was like, nah, something's not well, right remember- here. You remember last week, Chuck, we talked about this. We, we kind of talked this over for about five minutes on the show. We said that we thought that maybe uh, what they would do was they would go ahead and put the club over this week, and then they had the feel-good WrestleMania moment with Enzo and Cass. No. So, I mean, we got, what, another three weeks away, and you got WrestleMania? Yeah. Something like that. Three, so three and a half we'll weeks, see, but... Yeah, and we'll see, but I'm I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure that the, you'll you'll be looking at new champs in end zone cast. Um, definitely, I would say definitely, but more than likely, you'll probably see them putting the straps on them, which is good because I don't care about the the club. They they're doing nothing for the tag team scene. Nothing, nothing. They bring now, let me ask KJ, K, KJ, to what? make it to make it really fair, they are doing something for the tag team scene. They're giving gentlemen like our esteemed colleague, Mr. Chris Adams. Hope that even bald men can make it in the WWE. Thank Got you, it. thank you very much. Um, thank you, and and you know Chuck's right there along with me. And uh, after seeing uh, yeah, after, seeing, at, after seeing Mike talk to somebody on camera the other night, I think he's uh, running a close race behind you there. So uh, I'm telling you what, you know, it's, it's, talk uh, about it's the almost to the point where I'm. Team. Yeah, hey, it's almost to the point where I'm about to give it the you can't quit your fired haircut. You should go ahead. <laughs> Just go ahead. Go ahead. Get it over with. You, you, you hit the wall already. You hit the yeah, wall. Yeah, that'll well grow it out in the back. You can grow it out in the back like Heyman and have a little ponytail back there like he used to do. But uh, I'll ask you the question about the tag match here. Oh, you mentioned that this is the best one we've seen at the end zone in a while. What do you think was different as far as the match they had tonight versus these things he's done in the past with these other tag matches? I mean, what what suddenly makes him stand out in a great match, you think? Was it something he did differently other than just not sucking? I mean, all all jokes aside, yeah. here, I mean, what, 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 what do you think was different about tonight for him? Basically, he didn't fuck up. Well, no, I think no, was... I'm not going to know. I don't think it's just that. I think he calmed down. He goes in, he his character doesn't wrestle. He just, like, kind of spazzes out. So I think that helps to do that because he's usually all over the fucking place. And, so he and calmed you, out a little bit. And did you notice, okay. too, that most of the big spots that he had, he was assisted by big cast? Yeah. You know, yeah. like tossing him over, you know, that Going into the turnbuckle. Throwing him into the turnbuckle, that kind of thing. I think that helps a lot. Watch off the top rope. Because Cass has yeah. great control. He has great control over himself and whoever he's working with in the ring. Yes, absolutely. And he Enzo has no ring. control. Uh-huh. In, Enzo's, see, uh-huh. Cass, is like a, Cass is like a rocket ship. He has direction. Enzo's like a balloon that you fill up with air and then let go. It just goes <laughs> all over the ring. That- Dude, it's like he has ADD, dude. Seriously. It's like he has major... He reminds me of the human version or the epitome of ADD. That kid is all over the place. I think if he saw, like, ooh, look, a squirrel ran, he'd try to rustle that. Like, it's all over. He's all over the place, man. Yeah, if it wasn't wasn't for the wellness program that they've got, I'm I'm pretty sure I'd be convinced that he was on crack. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Bouncing around like crazy. Yeah, so you have to... Go ahead. I, I was going to say, Mike mentioned earlier about them doing something, you know, you know, we were just kind of make, making the joke about them doing something for the tag scene and uh, on Raw, but really and truly, you know, we don't have a great tag scene on Raw right now for the most part. It, it mm-hmm. hasn't, hasn't felt like it anyway. I mean, we got Cesaro and Sheamus, which were entertaining as tag champions, and I guess it wouldn't be a bad thing if they were still up there. It's, I, I'm, I'm glad they finally put it on the club, even for a little bit. Because to me, you brought them there for that main reason to be your next big bad guys there. But I mean, who else do we really have as t- uh, a good legitimate tag team there? You get the New Day, but they had theirs for so long, it was time to move on to something different. Yeah, I think I mean, they're moving the so, New Day into a more of a marketing kind of a thing. I, it, you know, it's man, like, it feels like it. It's like it we we don't like want it. to break them up because they make us a lot of money, mm-hmm. but we we can't have them hold the tag team titles again. 
So let let them host Raw and have some ice cream bars or whatever the crap they're trying to do now. Yeah, oh, do you see the side of it? Now. New Day Pops? Yeah. <laughs> New Day Pops. But listen, mm-hmm. I love your boys, but you have to tell Mike. You have to tell them they need to chill out because something was going on with Big E. I don't know what that was, but he need to calm the fuck down, bro. He been oh, sipping on it. He been sipping. That's what they said. He been sipping. <laughs> Well, I don't give a fuck what he was sipping, what he wasn't sipping. He needs to stop. He was drooling and licking and gyrating. It got uncomfortable. It was like watching my dad and mom make out. You know what I mean? Like, Look, I, don't I was going to bring shit. that up. I, I was going to bring that up later. Did it, did it, but on a serious note for a second, did it not seem like he looked like he was on something to you? Like yeah, he was, man. Like he was truly messed up on something. Like he, he, he showed up uh-huh. drunk or he showed up high or something. I don't know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It, makes, it, it really makes me wonder because he was no, legitimately it, acting stupid. Well, you know what, though? I think that it might have been something because you know the boys in the back always want to push the envelope. And I wouldn't be mm-hmm. surprised if they were like, yo, E, yo, E, yo, E. Do something stupid, man. It doesn't matter. Just do it. Do, I dare you to do it on this paper. They're not going to do anything to you. Don't worry about it. Like, just don't whip your dick out. It'll be fun. You know what I mean? Right. The boys do that shit, you know, and, and I wouldn't be surprised. But he's been more blatant about stuff. They all have been, but especially him, been more sexual, more blatant about things. And it doesn't make sense to me because the New Day shouldn't come off. I don't. I feel like the New Day should not be mixed with the um, Degeneration X, you know, or, or that kind of thing. They should just be right. New Day. You can have fun and whatever. Um, and now you can't even make them heal because they're – they're raking in so much money. They're oh making money hand over fist. Yeah. They can't go heal. It, 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 it's the John Cena right then and there. They can't go right. heal. They can't do that. But the stuff they're doing, just I just don't... I'm not saying like a stickler or, or trying to be like approved, like, oh, it's not appropriate. It's just not appropriate for their character. And I don't think it's a good... It's a good look for them to do stuff like that. That whole segment made no sense. I had no idea what they were trying to talk about because he was just ruling and being stupid. And I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what, where they were going with it. Sometimes their segments are just a little too, like why, why? I so, I, I kind of got it. I mean, I kind of got it in the sense, in a way, that they've been building up this this whole ice cream bit for weeks now, and the only thing they had for them on the pay per view was a quick appearance to ride down on a bicycle cart that was an ice cream cart saying New Day Pops on the side of it advertising their supposed ice cream that they didn't really give any of. So, I mean, it makes you wonder if that's a legit deal they're going to start marketing like they did the Bootios or if it's just something that they just want to get them on there for a little bit because they they probably figured we got to get our money makers on there if only for a few minutes to make an appearance. Just like at WrestleMania. They're just going to host yeah. WrestleMania. There's no match in the works for them that I've heard yet. They're just no. hosting WrestleMania. Yeah. Big deal. I mean, the you know, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, and Stone Cold hosted WrestleMania 30, and they get out there and stay yeah. on, on the, the what in the ring for what 10 minutes. Hogan screwed up what city they were in. The other two laughed at him for a few minutes, and that was it. Nothing mm-hmm. else memorable really happened. I mean, The Rock showed up later at the end of it for about two minutes, but that yeah, was it. Well, so what, what exactly mean. are they going to do? I mean. They got nothing for them. It's going to be, it's, to, it's going to be it's something to show different. How bad the you know it's going to be something is. different. Right, but it's just going to show how bad off the tag team is right now in Raw. They need to either move at least one of them from SmackDown over if they have to, or bring a new one up from NXT. So you've got you've got DIY that can get moved up. You've got uh, um, oh, what's the other other guy that 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 faced DIY for the NXT Championship something long ago. No, not the Authors no. of Pain. The one before, the one before Authors of Pain. These two guys did the Iron Man match, I think, where they did the best two out of three or something. I don't remember. Um, uh, you got oh, that, well, Dawson uh, and Dawson and um, uh, Dash and Dawson, Dawson or something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. The I mean, they there were the revival. Thank you, DIY and the revival. They got one of those two that could come up for sure, if not both of them. I mean, one of them at least. Yeah. I mean, you got—I don't know who else would fight DIY if both of them come up. I'm not, I haven't kept up with NXT in the last few weeks, but at the same time, I mean, they need some help on that main roster on Raw for a tag for the tag team division. Something's got to give, or just or just don't have it. I mean, one of the two don't don't halfway do it. That's yeah. what really that's what really frustrates me about. It. I've always been a tag team match fan, and to have a a, a, a stupid tag t- division like they have is just really killing me. You know what but, they should do? I've got it. 
They should What's bring that? Heath Slater over from SmackDown and put him with Sami Zayn, and they could have the tag team Red Power. <laughs> Red Power. Or, the, or, or No Soul uh, Crew. Uh, 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 I, I'm, I'm not feeling it, uh, Mike. Uh, oh, come uh, on. Come uh, on. Uh, blink, blink, um, blink. <laughs> Um, um, uh, I'm just, hold anyway. on, hold on. I, 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 hold right. on a I, I, I got this. Yes, go ahead, please. Please, Jim. Hurry up. You guys are so funny. Yeah. So it funny. would I'd be funnier if this guy was on cue. There's it, it a pause there. I couldn't help it. There was a pause in the thing. Blame blog talk. Moving on. Let's get to the next. Yes, let's get out of the next tag. Let's, 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 get, let's, let's get out of the tag turn. Let's get out of the whole tag I, division. I, Forget about them. I'm glad I'm not in vaudeville with Chris because he would screw up my timing all the time. But go ahead. We got to work on this. Uh, one. Um, you got to work on it. I'm good. One of the two. One of the two women's matches of the night, and this is one of them that I feel Chuck's complaint meter hitting ten right now. We've got. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sasha Banks beating Nia Jax tonight. Mike. Unfortunately. Oh, oh okay. okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Go no, 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 go ahead. No, 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 no. Well, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Chuck should go first this time. I'm just saying, you know, we've been going Mike first. I thought you were going to go that direction again, but by all means, Chuck, tackle it, man. It's yours. Um, As much as I would l- hate to say that so it went down wrong. It actually, I'm going to say, went down right. Um, that is the way you beat Nia Jax. It's as ridiculous as it sounds. At least you could do that. Um, it's believable, anyway. Real, yeah. Realistically, should she have? No. But you're going to have Nia Jax destroy everybody, especially one of the top talents? No. That's not going to happen. Um you can't have that because the women's division is not rich enough. Years ago, it would be rich enough. You would take a, a, a what is it, Summer Rae and have her get destroyed. You take a Alicia Fox and destroy her, you know, till you get to the top. And there is it, the women's division in Raw is not deep enough. The women's division in period is not deep enough. Um, and they need to get more women's up there. That is the way it is. Um, with that said, Nia Jax actually looked destructive. Kind of made her look like a big goof, though. So my thing is this. What do you do? Because if you put the title on, on Nia Jax, I mean, realistically, you put on Nia Jax, who's beating her? She, like, literally, um, what's her name? Uh, Sasha Banks looked like a child against her. She looked like that was her really big sister. It was, it was like, embarrassing. <laughs> It was embarrassing. So the question is, how do you use Nia Jax from now on? Does she become like the big show where she was dominant and then all of a sudden now she gets beat so you know how to beat her so she's just a jobber? Or do you say, fuck it, you know, just unleash her? But right now you can't because who do you have? You know, I mean, think about it. Who do you have? You don't have a lot. So when there's a big, when there's a huge shark in a, a pool, a very small pool of smaller fish, what do you do? You know, that's the problem. But I don't have a complaint about the match other than it was slow and plotted. And that's how I felt the whole night was. So there you go. Michael. All right. So our, our new governor here in West Virginia he, he was on the radio here recently, and, and he made an analogy about uh, business and government and all this that, that really applies to this match. He said it was like a poodle versus a grizzly bear, and that's exactly what we had tonight. The problem was is that the grizzly bear is really slow and really winded at three minutes into the match. Yep. Nia Jax is extremely out of shape. It's okay to be big. You know, awesome calm, karma, big, but in shape. Nia Jax is big and out of shape, horribly so. She was tossing Sasha Banks around like a rag doll, but by the time the match was midway, she was out of steam. 
it yep. was it was all she could do to pick herself up, let alone Miss Banks. Now, the way it ended, I agree with, but it should have ended about three or four, maybe five minutes before it did. Because by the time yeah. it did end, Nia Jack had to catch her breath before she could react to the fact that she actually lost. So this is why Nia Jax needs to get in shape and then be unleashed. That. I because I, she is out of shape. I agree. I agree. Well, now she. And she I would. Oh, okay. I, I would tell you guys why. Uh, what I thought. I had no problem with the matches the way it went tonight, as far as her winning and the way she won. And the reason I say that is because um, you know Nia Jax has been very dominant over Sasha Banks for the most part. Week in, week out, and she was still dominant on her on this entire match for the most part. Uh, Sasha Banks got a few offensive moves in there. She got a little bit of time on her. To me, it just looked like that the way the win was portrayed to be was it was just a shock that she got rolled up as quick as she did, and the bridge that she put over on her was just enough to keep her on top for the three count win. Because you see that whenever she got when she fell out, whenever she got off of her to the pin and rolled out. Nia Jax was livid, basically. She was not hurt in any way. She was just shocked she got rolled up like she did. So that's if you're going to beat her and still make Nia Jax look, you know, dominating and devastating, that's the way you do it. You let her manhandle her throughout the match like she did for the most part, and then you go ahead and you roll her up to the end of the match for a quick one, two, three with a little shock roll up or something. And so I, I kind of like how that part went, and that she finally got a win over her, but. You don't let Sasha Banks, even though she is kind of big, you know, you you can't let Sasha Banks keep getting over on her because of the size difference like that. It's too it's too much. I agree. That's just what I thought about. I it, agree. Though. No, I agree. There's totally one hundred ten percent. So you, what you need to do in that particular um, in that particular um, instance is you have the same match only this time. You have her be have a dominant clean win, you know. You just have to have that, and then you know, not, you know, if they can trade stuff back and forth, that's fine. To be quite honest, she shouldn't be running. There shouldn't be a long program between her and um, and Sasha Banks anyway. But then again, what do you do? I mean, you have to breed her eventually to be a champion. She has to be a dominant champion. But as Mike says, nobody's going to watch somebody who's out of shape. Nobody. Nobody's going to watch a champ- an out of shape champion unless you want to do Goldberg. You want to have a, gold- a female Goldberg. You know what well, I mean? Like, to be fair, Goldberg's in better shape, and he's probably 20 years true. older. Yeah, that, that, that should. Yeah, it's just, it's not, let me put it this way, and I hate to say it, because I don't care too much about the looks, but we are talking about. We are talking about entertainment. She should lose weight first for her health, second for her, you know, to do her job, and third to make her look a little bit more pleasing. Because that suit is not is not um, flattering. I'm sure the suit isn't her first choice either. No, but but she doesn't even really that's have that's to terrible. lose weight. She just needs to she needs to improve her cardio. I mean, she could still be big. And, and have a, b- a better cardiovascular uh, fitness level. That's yeah. what gets her. I, you know, in 20 years, if she continues the way she is, from you know, we've all seen the pictures of her modeling days. She was not nearly as big as she is now. She was still a big girl, but not nearly as big as she is now. In 20 years, yeah. when she's Goldberg's age, she's gonna she's gonna have like 16 kids in a rascal uh, going through Walmart. Looking for the ding dongs and the ho hos, <laughs> and that's just how it's going to be. She'll be sitting sideways on it because she won't be able to sit with her stomach. It, it'll be in the controls, and she won't be able to steer it. So she'll be sitting side saddle on the rascal, yelling at all, 50, all fifteen of her kids, looking for the ding dongs and the ho hos, and talking about how she used to be in the WWE. So with the way they've had it with her, with her and Sasha going on, how do you think they would do if they pit her up against uh, Charlotte? I mean, would they make her look super dominant on Charlotte and make Charlotte look like she's not as great 
as she's been this whole time? Or what, what would they do in that situation, do you think? Charlotte would eat her alive. Wait, say this Chuck, again? I must have missed something. Well, I'm just wondering, the way they've had her and Sasha Banks go, you know, Sasha Banks was supposed to be like the big deal coming up from NXT along with Charlotte and uh, Becky Lynch when they first came up. So with uh, Nia Jax handling Sasha Banks like she does, how do you think she would look if they put her up against Charlotte Flair? Would she be just as dominating on Charlotte or would it make Charlotte look like she's on the weekend at that point? Or would they keep Charlotte looking like she normally does and have her handling Nia Jax? Um... If WWE were smart, it would be Charlotte handling Nia Jax. You you don't sacrifice a Charlotte for a Nia. A Nia could go away and people go, whatever happens. Charlotte goes away and people go, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like, where is she? Like, legitimately asking where she is, whereas Nia Jax would be a whatever happens. So, um, if they were smart... They make it a pretty decently physical match. She's the only one that could probably, you know, height-wise and everything else. I mean, she's still a light drink of water comparatively. Yeah. But we're talking about a person that can wrestle, who can wrestle her ass off. You can't. I mean, you, what are you going to do? You're going to have. Go ahead. <clears throat> Sorry, Charlotte is athletic. Charlotte is muscular. Charlotte has strength. Naya uh-huh. is fluffy. Uh, Nia is a six foot tall, two hundred and forty pound fluff ball. Uh, Charlotte's what five ten, five eleven, probably a probably a buck sixty, a buck seventy, of muscle. She would absolutely tear her ass up. Oh yeah, no, there's no question. She would I wrestle that. her. Uh-huh. But we she have would to wrestle her. Yeah, exactly. And I know that. What I'm saying is, <laughs> you know, we're talking as in the realm of the heat. We're talking about the realm of we still want to make it look like something. The thing is, yes, she can have, she can run rings around her. Like, you know, if it's just, there's no contest. It's it's a shame. It's what, they should do the big show treatment on her. Mm. They should. That's what they need to do. It needs to happen. And if they can't see it, then they're blind. Tonight should have been a, a huge indication of where she was on the on the the food chain, unfortunately. You know, oh, and I, I mean, I have a new nickname for her as well. When you're done, Chuck, just don't let me forget. Okay, don't be too disrespectful to my girl. Don't be too disrespectful to Naya. I love me some Naya, and and she will cry, and I will nestle her big, huge head into my bosom. As she cries. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's okay. It'll be the other way around, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But um no, basically just to finish up, like I mean, come on. Who is Nia Jax gonna face? Who is even on the roster anymore? Who's on the roster? How many? How many women's uh are in this well, uh, got, of division? You've got Charlotte, Bailey, uh Dana, Sasha, and Nia. And that's all that I know that are actively competing. I mean, Alicia Alicia Fox is kicking around, but I've not seen her wrestle in months. Mm-hmm. Yep, she's on but, 205. But anyhow, so after seeing the uh, leg drop finisher performed by Nia Jax, I now dub her She-Quake. Because it really was reminiscent of the old earthquake finisher oh, uh, Jesus from days gone by. So she is from she here on out known as Sheequake. I thought he was going to call her Bulk Hogan or something like that. I didn't know. <laughs> no, no, uh, no. Hey, 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 hey Mike. That better. Yeah. Hey, Mike, yeah. out of curiosity, do, do we have somebody on hold waiting to come on, or are they just uh, we do? I figured right we now? would we would bring we would bring him in on our as we go into the next match. Because you know it's everybody's favorite man, Ray, from New Jersey. Ray. Let's, let's welcome in Ray from the NJ. Oh, what's up, gentlemen? How dare you, sir? How dare you call us gentlemen? All right, fine. Oh, I Ladies thought he was just talking gentlemen. to Chris. 
I started to say he was talking to me. Thanks a lot. Uh, he was and, and you guys also. I mean, I guess. I mean, we had to throw you in that same category, but hey, listen, I gotta be nice once in a while, don't I? I guess. No. Occasionally, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you don't want that whole thing about New Jersey and New York, you know, clouding you guys over up there. That y'all are always hard cases and everything, right? Occasionally, it's okay for you guys to be nice people. Listen, I'm South yeah. Jersey dog, so we already are a little, little bit nicer. Hey, I'm South Jersey too, my friend. So don't feel bad. Hey, that's, that's well, yeah, when they give you, hey. when they give you a ride, Chris, it's not in the trunk of the car. Listen to them, Mike. Darn Yankees! Listen to them talking that way. Man, Jesus Christ! Well, this guy over here, this guy over here, he's gonna talk like he's a, you know, he's a fool. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, Chris. I just, I just got done, you know, playing my banjo and you kissing my purtiest cousin. You so, now, 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 now. That's right. Tell you There's what, a river I, down here. You boys should try to go down at once. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, you know, my wife was telling me about it. Um, uh, we'll talk about it off, off whatever. My wife was just telling me about the uh, – wedding that she attended in West Virginia, and uh, it was quite interesting. People had to have on their, they put on their best flannels. So, uh, yes. <laughs> so we, we, we only break those out boots. for very special occasions. <laughs> and the, the good suspenders and the blue jeans with no holes. I mean, it's kind of like good Don't china open. in a way, but it's, it's, it's wearable stuff. Exactly. Don't forget about the work boots. Uh, the work boots, no, yeah. I heard, <laughs> listen, I heard there was no shoes, uh, uh, honestly. I heard there was, like, a, apparently a no-shoes policy. Hey, I don't know what that happened. If it's summer, if it's summertime, we better see your damn toes. But you don't want to see my toes. I, I got, oh. listen, I, listen, I got toes. My talons will pick up, like, little mice, and I'll fly away and eat them in shame. You don't want to see my toes. Ray, did you think when you called in, you'd be talking about this instead of wrestling? Anything, anything's show. possible with this show. Shut That's up. true. <laughs> you have learned us well, then. Well, we are jumping to our next yes. match here. We've already gone through the first three, and uh, if you want, if you want to get your comments on those as we go through the list here, we'll get back with you on the first three matches. But we got the fourth match, and uh, to me, uh, it was those. Um, oh, gosh, I, I'm just going to call them filler matches for later because I, when I saw it, I knew they had to bring in some extra matches because that last match wasn't going to take no time. But we got Cesaro was the first match over uh, Jinder Mahal and um, it's like Mahal and uh, Rusev fought to see who got the first match almost. You know, it's definitely over as a tag team. I guess they're going to feud now. But uh, the Cesaro and Jinder Mahal match they had first uh, was decent. Um I mean, I, I wasn't expecting that match to be on there, so it kind of threw me for a loop for a little bit. But I mean, it wasn't an, a, a terrible match by any means. I just really wasn't um, into it. Uh, were you? I mean, Mike, what would you think? I didn't care two shits about it, really. I I don't see the value in Jinder Mahal. Uh, I hate his name. Uh, every time they they uh, they say it, every time uh, Michael Cole says it, it sounds like he's saying uh, Chigger Mahal, and I'm like. So he's a he's a little bug that gets under your skin, but uh, eh, it just it didn't do it for me. I actually didn't do it. I don't know, Ray. What you think about that particular match? Oh, in my opinion, that was when I went outside to go smoke a cigarette. See, that's what it, I'm it saying. Just, Filler match. Right. I mean, for what it was worth, I mean, Cesaro carried the match. I've seen a little bit more, you know, ring ability in Jinder Mahal as of late compared to when he was here with 3MB and when he had the feud with Kali. But if anything, if they're going to do anything right with him, use this whole situation with the travel ban and, you know, the Muslims and whatnot, and use that to their advantage and, and play it into the story. But other than that, the the match between those two, I'd give it maybe a C minus. See the problem uh, yeah, is, I, is he's, he's not Muslim, he's Hindu. So it wasn't 
But you know, tomatoes, they don't care. Which one of them WWE? WWE does not care. Do you really is, think this is just, they don't care? Is this is true this, 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 this is a bad company. This is a company that could claim to be that. Hey, this is the company that they came up with, Akeem, the African Dream. That's what I'm Enough saying. Said. It doesn't matter. Enough said. It they doesn't can, matter. Exactly what Ray said. They can play it off if they want to, but there's a couple of problems with it. One, it's a really touchy subject in the world today, or at least in the United States anyway, the way all that's going down. It would be smart uh, to play that you get a lot of heat from the angle, but at what cost? It's hard to say because of all the stuff that's going on. You may get a lot of you know, bad fights in the crowds and stuff like that. You, you never can tell with the people, and then plus the, the whole ignorance factor of it. Yes, like I said, he's not really, <laughs> he's not really from there. <laughs> you, can, you, you can play him off to be that all you want, and it's, it's cool. Like you said, it came the African dream. He was white as can be, the one man gang for crying out loud. And then three, uh, the McMahons are kind of you know publicly known to be on the Trump side of things because Linda McMahon being has a, has a job within that little bit there, so they're not going to really do something that stands out against any policies he puts out there either. And then we got the whole PG thing going on. I mean, the whole PG thing, that could get out of hand really quick and won't be very PG when it comes well, down right. to it. So, you're, you're right. You're, listen, you're right. What? You're right. I know you guys you're remember right. what happened yeah. okay. Damn yeah. it. after 9-11. Yeah. With uh, Muhammad mm. Hassan and uh, the first Davari. Right. Right, when they did that with it The was, Undertaker. It was brutal, and they couldn't get work anywhere. Mm-hmm. Once they left WWE, I read that they could not. Muhammad Hassan basically quit the business because he couldn't go anywhere. And, and it's a shame because they were actually play- up until if 9/11 wouldn't have happened, you would have seen Muhammad Hassan as the world champion. That was their game plan, and they thought it was going to bring a lot of heat. But like you said, once 9/11 happened, and then they brought the mask guys in to, to uh, beat up the Undertaker, and they removed that from any programming, any any replay programming on the network, and. The last you ever seen was from Muhammad Hassan was a last ride off a uh, last ride off of the entrance way, and that's the last you ever seen of him. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and you see how careful they are with Davari now, Chuck. Think about that. On the 205 Live, even though you don't watch a lot of it, they're kind of careful with what they do with Davari that they get on there now. No, I mean, I they don't see do that. It. I see it. I see it. See, they had a lot of success that almost got Sergeant Slaughter killed during the Iraqi war, if you remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there were death you know, letters coming to his house. Yeah, exactly. He had to leave. He had to have special security, because if not, they would have died. And that's the thing. And that was a near miss. That could have been a whole lot worse. So I don't think they're trying to tempt fate, and especially after the 9-11 thing. It's just a weird, it's a weird time in life right now. It's a weird and that, time. It's a weird. Right, yeah. especially with ISIS running around, the travel ban. Yeah, just everything. So it's 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 too close. What people want to do is they want to have they want to have wrestling so they can escape real life. But right. when they play on the fears and it's all too real. Nobody wants that. They don't mind the boogeyman. They don't mind you know like taking people in the unknown and the and the supernatural. When you make real, real, when you make it like almost like a shoot, and it's it, anything could happen, you never know in today's society. No, it's, it's, it's a smart thing. But let's get back to because I didn't say my piece. Let's get back to. Well, wait, um, no, if, if you don't, if you don't yeah. mind, real quick, I just have one more thing to add to that. Yeah. Back when the when the Muhammad Hussein thing went down. There wasn't all the internet gossip and, you know, the, the insight that they have like they do nowadays on the internet. So mm-hmm. I think with everything that's going on with the internet now, if they did play out that angle, I don't think there would be as much heat behind it because yeah. everything has broken that line of kayfabe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So true, I, true. I don't think, I don't think the, um, uh, the cause and effect would be as bad as it would have been with Slaughter and with Hassan. 
No, you're, you're, you're correct, but sometimes people, as I like to say, the WWE likes to fuck up a wet dream, and I don't know. Right. KJ, what were well, your thoughts on the match? Thank you. Um, I actually thought that, um, what's his name? Yeah, Cesaro? Him. Gender? Yeah, Gender Mahal. First of all, he's Jack. He's uh, Jack Mahal. Um, <laughs> Roy. And, and he, yeah, exactly. But he didn't look good tonight. I've seen him look better. He he did this little, like, he, when he wanted to go run and hit Rusev with that knee, he did this, like, little, like, like a Giselle, like, or whatever they're called. Like, you know, like a... <laughs> He, he he did this like hop skip and then he did it again and then he ran. It was the weirdest thing. It's like when you when you shine a light on a rabbit and the rabbit doesn't know where to jump. That's he looked just like that and I was like, what just happened? It just wasn't a good match. It really wasn't. And Cesaro tried the best he could. Um, he, like I I kept saying like he had he had Cesaro and he had him over the the rope and trying to choke him, but before all that, just to get him to that point, it didn't make sense, because he didn't know what he wanted to do with him. And I'm going, I'm looking at my wife going, what the hell is he trying to do? It just felt like that whole night was like that. But that well, match... Was it one of those botch moments you were talking about earlier, Chuck? Yeah, yeah, even if it wasn't a botch, it's just like, figure out what you want to do. There was a lot of that tonight, like... Okay, kick him, kick him. Okay, you you don't know what you're doing. You know, like I don't know. It, it just it, it, it wasn't a great. It's not a memorable match for me. The only the only thing right. I remember is, you know, uh, Cesaro won by throwing him up in the air, giving him, uh, you know, the a, big uppercut, uh, European uppercut, and then pinning him. That was it. I was like, oh, oh and that's okay. not, it, it, is that even really his finisher? That's, that's not even that's not even his finisher. He did to him either, really. Nope. If you think about no, it, that's no. more, that's more that's or more less his. That's more or less his. That's more or less a signature. If you're playing 2K17, it's, it's essentially a signature. Right. It's a build because up to the finisher. The, right. He's got the gotch, neutral, uh, gotch neutralizer, and he's got the uh, sharpshooter. Well, going mm, on to yeah. the next one here, uh, the uh, uh, I don't want to say the two. I don't want to say it was a, a big disappointment as far as the match went. But you had Rusev and the Big Show at that point. And let's just let's just kind of jump back a little bit here of why this is happening. You got you got Jinder Mahal, and you've got Rusev backstage arguing to McFoley. They want to pursue singles matches and no longer tag together. And suddenly, you know, he gets the thought. He's gonna put the two of them in a match. He said, they say no. No, we don't want that to get each other. But he's going to get them singles matches out there tonight. So they kind of sprung that on us at the last minute. So we get the whole Jinder Mahal thing inside out of the way now. We're going to the big show now versus Rusev. You didn't know who each one was going to get. And I kind of assumed that since um, Sheamus came out, maybe he was going to be the opponent for Rusev. Then you hear the big show's music hit. And the big show comes down. Now, the big show, like Mike said earlier, still looking pretty good out there. Still looking in some top shape. Like he could take on anybody he wanted to right now. Had a pretty decent match with Rusev. Looked pretty, uh, I don't want to say dominating exactly. I mean, he, he did dominate moments of the match. But, I mean, overall, it was a pretty good match. I didn't see very much, uh, as far as mess-ups go, like you mentioned, Chuck, you know, like, what do you want to do? I didn't see a lot of indecision hmm. in that match. It's no. like they knew what they were going for, and they went with it, and that was it. You know, boom. That's smooth, Mike. Big Show looked great tonight. It was like he actually came out of his show a little bit, and you and I talked about this a little bit earlier, Chris. Mm -hmm. Um, We've seen the reports that Shaquille O'Neal no longer wants the the match at WrestleMania because, well, frankly, he's pretty damn fat and probably wouldn't even make it to the ring without needing to stop and sit down for a bit. So... I'm wondering if Big Show isn't wasn't holding back just how good a shape he was actually in for that match, and now that it looks like it might be scrubbed, well, probably is scrubbed. If he's not, if this wasn't his opportunity to start coming out of that show a little bit, saying, "Hey, yeah, look at me, I actually move now," because he moved tonight. He he was quick. He was quick. For a for a forty year old giant, he was quick. 
Yeah, I hear Chuck back there in the background. Uh, he's he's it's groaning. That, it's that bitter uh, pill he had earlier. So we have to catch it up. Yeah, <laughs> that's nothing it, to do with bitter. It's real. He's still up, he's still upset that I that I called his girlfriend she quick. Hey. Hey, hey, look, look here. I, I, I called him Negative Nancy earlier. He said I prefer to look at it as realism. Mm-hmm. I told him it didn't cool. matter. I said, you know, Wendy's likes to call it a frosty. Either way you look at it, it's ice cream in a cup. It doesn't matter. Well, re- realistically, Chuck, the big show is in phenomenal shape, and he's moving like he hasn't moved in years. And I disagree. I disagree. I think he's in great shape for his size. I think he's in great shape for his age. Do I think he's in great shape? No. I think he's he's in, as far as cardio, no. He was sucking wind. He didn't move that well. I was hoping that he would move as well. I was disappointed. I've oh, seen that not. man, listen, I have seen that man run down to the ring, fly under the uh, the bottom rope, and slide in as if he was uh, edge, you know, back in the day. I saw the Back when he drop kicks off the top rope. Just no, yeah, I'm not even saying 20. that. No, no, this was. I'm not saying 20. No, 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 no. We're not talking 20. We're not talking WCW. We're talking WWE probably five years ago. That man no. could do it. Maybe, maybe no. a little bit. Maybe eight. Yes. You, you, you have a home. distorted view of time, my friend. Mm-mm, mm-mm, sir. Because I remember five years ago he was at his well, heaviest. Yeah. Okay then. Okay. Okay. Well, let's see. Oh. Well, no, no. <laughs> let me tell you why. No, 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 gentlemen. Let me tell you why. I got back into pro wrestling in 2010. Between that time and now, I saw the big show run down into the ring, slide in. I mean, he was booking, made it, and jumped up on his feet. And I was like, what is going on? There was a point where he wasn't at his heaviness. There was a point where he was very much changed. And for whatever reason, and because I, I haven't watched wrestling from before then, so I know it wasn't in the early 2000s. It was recently, like in the last, well, since 10,000, was it 2017, last seven years. So I'm telling you, he didn't look that good tonight. I'm sorry. You know, or he, he looked as good as it possibly could be, but no, I disagree. That's just me. Who's listening? What is, who's somebody playing something in the background? Is it I feel a, like a TV show. Is it Mike crunching chips and watching TV in the background or something? Yeah, probably no, watching there's TV. No, there's no TV here. Ray. Oh, Ray's Ray. Ray's Ray's Ray. Ray's That's my Ray's bad. I was, nah, my girlfriend, what did you do, My girlfriend's Ray? watching Ghost Hunters, and I turned. It, I, I wasn't sure if she could hear it or not, and I just turned it up a notch. I guess I turned it up a little too, bit, too much, but I turned it back down some. Ray, don't mm. cheat on us, Ray. Don't cheat yeah. on us. Yeah, all right. I, I, I have not had to do this, Ray, in a really long time. I have not. But you, uh, sir. You just made the list. Oh, God. Man, I didn't want to do that. Oh, I well. didn't. I really didn't. But <laughs> yeah, walk my the, hand into the club. Ray, the club, what did you buddy. think of the of Big Show versus Rusev? Because, well, frankly, Chuck's opinion sucks balls. I'm sorry. It's realistic. Um, Go ahead, please. I mean, uh, first of all, no homo. Rusev looked good. The, the short hair, and, and I know this isn't in a match, but the short hair works for him. I, and I think they're going to no. throw him face eventually. But um, the match itself, it really, I seen a better match out of the big show uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, whatever it was, against Braun Strowman. Um, and neither one of them necessarily looked dominant at all. <laughs> But the finish, all right, the finish wasn't terrible. The match could have been a lot better. I mean, and, and the Big Show is probably in the best shape of his life, despite what Chuck says. Ever compared to, I mean, ever since the last time he was in this kind of shape, he was in WCW. Maybe maybe when he first came into the WWE, when he first joined uh, the union, you know, with Mick Foley, Ken Shamrock to test. That was probably the Compared to then, it's the best shape he's been in in 15 years. But it just it wasn't it wasn't memorable for me. I mean, I've remember, like I said, Braun Strowman and Big Show stuck out more in my mind in terms of in ring action, in terms of of, of uh, uh, drawing your attention than Rusev and Big Show did. 
Oh, no. Christopher? I'm, listen, I'm not saying, look at, wait a minute. I, let me just clear the, wait, let me just say oh one gosh. thing. Let me just say one thing. One thing, I, I promise. I liked the match. I'm not saying I didn't like the match. I'm just disagreeing with the whole, um, his actual conditioning. I actually enjoyed the match comparatively. I thought maybe Rusev at least had a chance. I knew that Ginger Mahal did not have a chance against Cesaro. I, I just knew it. But, like, those, the, this match, I didn't think it was a bad match. It wasn't, it was one of the better matches. Continue. I, 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 I mean, I, I liked the match. Like I said earlier, I liked the match overall. I'm glad that the Big Show got the win because I know he's, you know, not long for career at this point, and he's going to be gone here pretty soon. I would hate to see him go out like Mark Henry. Mark Henry keeps coming uh, back. I'm not saying that he keeps coming back because he wants to or he's made to, but, I mean, the, the thing is, uh, uh, uh. he's supposed to be like the world's strongest man. Or something. He's a you big know, the dude. Hall of, the Hall of Pain. The Hall of Pain. That says it, it all. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, the thing is, I mean, they won't. I mean, they won't put him in a decent push to get him some wins and make him look good on his way out the door and everything. Big Show, at least he's, he got the win against Rusev. He looked pretty good against Strowman the other day. Could have went either way. That was a great match on Monday night. It, it could have been uh, a Big Show victory, but they're not. They wouldn't let him into the victory going into the pay per view where he's facing Roman Reigns. Strowman still has to look indestructible and everything. He looked like he was beatable at that point, but he was still coming back from everything the Big Show did. But my well, that's question even when he faced that, Mark Henry. Right, same thing with Mark Henry. He 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 did a good thing. On, he he pretty much took Mark Henry out. You do talking about uh, Strowman, right? Yeah, Strowman Henry. Mark yeah. Henry still looked. I mean, he looked dominant for as long as he's been. But and I think it was a great test for Strowman for them to show. Hey, now he's putting them, Strowman against these guys that are as strong as Strowman, if not stronger, and it's showing Strowman's got, you know, the 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 dominance in general that he's taken out these guys that have been dominant for so many years. Yeah, now, my question is this, though. I mean, and this is all big show aside and everything now. Now, now that those two matches, we've discussed those two matches, what direction are they going with Mahal and Rusev? Are they going to have them two start feuding on Monday Night Raw each week now? Leading up to WrestleMania with a match against each other. If they do, I mean, yeah. who's the heel? Who's the face? Is there just two heels if fighting it, each other? You don't usually get it. It's a, if it's a match, it's going to be a pre-show because you got to remember WrestleMania now, including the kickoff show, is seven friggin' hours unnecessary. Hmm. But it's and it's going to go Rusev as the face because everybody's already cheering Lana. You know they're going to use that to their advantage. And Rusev has a following. I'm going to say it right now. Rusev, I think, is he's got a great gimmick. You know, he's he has move, he can move. All right. And Jinder Mahal is just not the type of guy you push as a face. He just no. He's never, ever, ever, ever been liked. So you don't take someone that's just they've never been able to get the fans behind. And make him a face. It's just it's going to be a failure altogether. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. His name's Uh-oh. Roman Reigns. I knew it was coming. I knew it the second he said it. I knew something was coming from you. <laughs> yeah, well, man. Uh, not to mention, oh, like, no, not to mention so Jinder Mahal is Jinder Mahal is a veteran talent, and I'm going to go as far as saying that he's a veteran talent, and essentially he's just there to put over other put up or put over newer talent and Rusev still falls under the category of newer talent. Some people, regardless of who they're going to put over, they're just there to be the person that looks tough but doesn't get the big push. Right. That would be yep. Jinder Mahal, like you're saying. He's there to be threatening. He's there to make you think he's going to get over on somebody one week and one week he might. But ultimately, he is not the guy that's going to get the push to any big title or anything. He's not going to get uh, liked by the fans in any way. He's not a big enough heel. He don't draw enough heat to be a dominant heel to get a title run, especially a major title. So he's just there to enhance the other talent and everything, make them look better, make them look right. better. He's a, he's a modern-day Ahmed Johnson. More yeah, or less. The only, difference is Ahmed, the only difference is Ahmed Johnson ended up with gold around his waist. Well, he, he did. Gender but, could too. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, that, that intercontinental but that, gold, you know. 
But that gold on his waist will go down as a questionable title. Should he probably really should he should have had gold around his waist? Was he that great when he was there at the time? I mean, I don't know. He was a powerhouse, and at the time, Vince wanted powerhouses, and that's all he's seen. He's seen dollar signs in that. The same could be said for Ezekiel Jackson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was just he was just Ahmed Johnson version two point oh. Yeah, but at least Ahmed could talk a little bit. Oh yeah. So they, well, put, yeah they, they they took the strap off of Cody Rhodes and put it on Zeke, thinking that it was going to be big. You know, oh yeah. And then all of a sudden they gave him the microphone right after he won the title. And then I knew I was like, uh oh, they screwed that up, didn't they? So. They did the same well, thing with John mistake, Morrison. You know? They gave John Morrison a microphone. Worst thing you could do. Yep. Now you know the next the next match we had. This is more down Ray's line here since he's announced last week that he does like the two hundred five pretty well. So I'm gonna put Ray on the spot first one here in this match, the Neville versus Jack Gallagher match that came out. Now I kind of had the thought, I kind of had the thought that maybe since Austin Aries is close to being cleared to come back to wrestle now, and they were there and they they mentioned that being. Did I hear incorrectly? Did they mention that being his hometown? They said I didn't um, think he was. I, I thought think he was Canadian he from the Minnesota area. I, yeah, I don't know why. I thought he was Canadian. I don't know why. I know that I, I must have heard that somewhere, or but somebody else. And I'm thinking Austin Aries in their place, maybe. I don't know. But for some reason, I thought he was Canadian. They were announcing about him being from there or close to there. I thought maybe this would be a night where he would stand out and do something. Like he would stand out. And Probably. make his intentions known to Neville that he wanted that title. It's well, probably because he okay. came from TNA with Bobby Roode and Eric Young and, and all those guys that are actually from Canada. That kid could be what I'm thinking. I don't know. I just It was in my mind, though, that he was Canadian for some reason. But what do you think about the uh, the match itself there, Ray, uh, with uh, Jack Gallagher and Neville tonight? And, yes, by the way, before I start on that, yes, he is from Milwaukee. I just looked it up. He's from Milwaukee. I, I thought they, I thought and he, they said and he earlier. Lives in, yeah, he's from Milwaukee. He lives in Los Angeles, and he's engaged to Thea Trinidad. I didn't know that last part either. That's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, that could be why she showed up on NXT. But anyway, um, you know, I mean, and, and, and I'm not going to go back to the first three matches yet or four matches yet. I mean, I know you guys said I could come back to that once we finish up with you know, after the end of the Owens Goldberg, but the only two matches in my mind that have really stuck out was Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn, and was this Neville Gallagher match? Honestly, in my opinion, I think Neville Gallagher stole the show. It was great. It, you, you seen a uh, uh, you seen a little bit of comedy from Gallagher, which is essentially what he is is a comedic relief in the cruiserweight division. But you seen. You've seen the back and forth. You've seen the suspense. You've seen moves. There was a couple times I thought Gallagher was going to die with that, that high-release German suplex and when he got thrown off the top rope. But, you know, I think the match was probably the best match of the night. Mike? And that's, that's how I feel. My gal. No, Michael, the Oh, uh, this was absolutely the best cruiserweight match I've seen since 205 Live started. It was physical. It was comical. Uh, everything looked like it was very, fairly well planned out. It had a good pace. I think both men are extremely talented. The uh, the headbutts from Gallagher were. Different, but I enjoyed seeing them. I guess he kind of looked like a redheaded, <laughs> redheaded goat. I just want to know this: was that act that sound him slapping something, or was that legit his head hitting Neville's chest? Because that was no. loud, man. That's, he, he, that was he, loud. He, he slaps time. He slaps his leg because I have watched it uh, a couple of times. I wanted to see. He slaps his leg, so it oh, okay. sound like there's a smack. So yeah. He slaps the leg. Well, he's slapping the um, shit out of it. Well, here's the, here's and at the, the end of the match, I'm not done yet now. I, I apologize. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. No, hey, I stepped on. I stepped on. At, at, at the end of the match, when when they're zoomed in on Gallagher sitting there, and you can see like his knees skinned, his elbows skinned. That's when you know he was working hard for it. Oh, it was now solid. you may speak. It was solid. Oh, thank you. That's mighty well, white of you. Um, so Sam, I um, just call me Kerwin. No, Jack Gallagher <laughs> is mighty white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, he is by the way. Uh, Great, he's, he's Chuck. Okay. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Now we're not going to get Ray to call back on the show ever again. Oh, way to go! I'm a message Ray Thanks right so now. Much. I'm a I'm a message you Ray right that. now. You get, you go ahead with your part, sir. <laughs> hey, I'm, hey, I'm in with that crowd. I'm Puerto Rican. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm sorry. So anyway, <laughs> the, uh, the the thing I I had a problem with. I liked the match. Do I think it was the best match I've seen for 205? No. Um, but the reason why I didn't like the match so much, it was more one-sided, and it did not show what Gallagher had to offer. I think it really could have been a better a better thing, a better match, if they showed what was in his, you know. I, I told my wife, I looked at her, I was like, wait until you see this guy. And then you're like, okay, so he does the the cute little thing and everything, but I think as far as wrestling goes, it was a one-sided, it was very one-sided. And I would have liked to have seen a lot more mat work from Gallagher. I mean, he he, he put in the work of selling, but um, it would have been nice to have a really good fight unless they're waiting for him. And I would love to see a rematch between him and um, uh, Neville at WrestleMania, even if it wasn't throw somebody in there or do three-way dance. I think they're two of the most talented on that roster right now. Um, yeah, but they got to keep Neville looking strong. You know, they, they call him the king of the cruiserweights. They have to keep him strong until somebody like Aries comes around. And I understand Gallagher's that technical guy, but you look at the size <laughs> difference. Yeah, but they still could have made it a little bit. He could have gave him a little bit more. They could have given mm-hmm. him a little, a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. You know, well, yeah, I can more. agree with that, especially with what they've been doing leading up until it's showing Gallagher fighting back, showing Gallagher in these promos and these segments where he's beating the piss out of Neville, and Neville's got to back off because he's, he's intimidated or scared or whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Other than that, it was a, it was a solid match. I mean, you, you're almost always going to get a solid match from Neville, and I like this Neville. I really do. I, I think it's very entertaining. I like that he's healed. I, I wasn't. I didn't buy into the man, the man that gravity forgot kind of bullshit. Um, no, so that's what he it. needed to revamp his character. Absolutely, absolutely. So I'm on board for that. I'm just not on board for 205. But it was a good match. I think it was the best match of the night. To be quite honest. So basically, Agreed. the best thing that ever happened to Neville was the injury he had. Yeah, because he went out for a while. Hurt. And came back with a new look, new feel, new Neville. He's a champion new now. New attitude altogether. New attitude, yes. Uh, the, the 205 Live, unlike you guys, I'm, I'm kinda, I kind of side with Ray here. I do like the 205 Live. When I do get a chance to watch it, I, I forget it every single week. And I try to catch some repeats of it or some of the highlights at least. I make sure to at least watch the highlights. And if I see something good in the highlights that I like, I'll go back and watch the whole thing. Um, that being said... Uh, uh, Mike is also correct in the fact that 205 Live has not been as good at all since the tournament they had and where they went all out for the tournament. Uh, and all the other people well, that, make the roster, that didn't make the roster are not there, it would it might make it more interesting for us if some of those other guys were on that roster along with what they but had But you now. also have to remember, two of the guys that put on hell of like phenomenal matches in that Cruiserweight tournament was honestly <laughs> Ciampa and Gargano. Right, and, and they're not they're even not, there. They're not up, right, they're not up on the roster yet, which I don't think they're going to be there until the night after Raw. Now, do you think so, they're going to 205 after, Live after or Mania. will they Raw and be a tag team? I think, uh, see, now that's the thing. They're, they're announced, they were supposed to be on that list of the 10 or 12 cruiserweights that were supposed to make the Raw roster at some point or another. Tajiri wasn't even on that list. But I think that they're so dominant as a tag team in general but I don't think I think that if they do end up in the cruiserweight division and on the two alive roster, I think it's going to be after a run as uh, in the tag team division. 
I don't. Yeah, I don't see them. Look, everybody likes D- DIY, and and I think people would be upset if they broke them up. Um, DIY would, needs to come like to raw. Well, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people would be upset if they didn't if they broke up. You know, yeah. Um, DIY, uh, DIY, I think is what the the raw tag team division needs. They need DIY. DIY. DIY, sorry. Um, they need them. I think they're, they're they're entertaining. They're not over the top. They're you know, and they can wrestle. So keep them as the tag team. They don't have. Or they can they can find cruiserweights. There's a lot of guys jumping around all over the world. You know what I mean? Literally jumping all over the place. So you could just throw them in. I'm sad that Tajiri's not even on that list because I love Tajiri. I wish he came back to Raw. I think it's another guy that would do very well. I miss the hell out of that guy. I think well, he needs to be back. There's a guy that's rumored to be, when he returns, he's coming straight to the main roster. And I don't think he's going to be a um, small uh, Raw SmackDown roster. And that I think he's going to be a 205 guy. Um, and especially because there's unfinished business. It was a few that was started, but two injuries happened. Yeah. And that's going to be Hideo Tommy. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, yeah, Tommy, yeah, man. Because if you remember, he got injured, and then right around that time, Austin Aries got injured, and they had started a feud between those two back at uh, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And uh, it never got finished. So I could see a Tommy going to 205 Live when, you know, the feud between, well, once the feud between Neville and Aries starts, um, and Aries takes that Cruiserweight title from Neville because that's, that's what's going to happen. They can't keep it on Neville much longer before it starts getting stale. Um, they're going to they're gonna have to, it's going to be a feud that everybody wanted to see, and it's something that would be, they are two big names that are going to be on the 205 roster, that can essentially bring more eyes to it because they're going to need it because, like I've said before, 205 Live, in terms of the rankings on the shows on the WWE Network, it's dropping lower and lower and lower every week, further and further down that totem pole. I mean, when you have um, um, Holy Foley ranking higher than in lo- live at that, live in-ring action, you have a problem. Of course. So they need I told something you, to bring man. eyes back to 205 Live. Well, they needed what they need to do is stop putting the cruiserweights on Raw, and they need to bring it back down to kind of like an NXT type of thing, where it's small, like like at Full Sail University, something small. They cannot do it the way that they're doing it. Nobody cares. Well, even, about even if they, even if they put it on before SmackDown, if they put it on before SmackDown no. and they start filling it, it up. It needs to be on yeah. a completely different night. It needs to be on Friday or Saturday, uh-huh. somewhere yep. where there is nothing else. Because by the time you're done with SmackDown and Raw, and that that five hours of wrestling in two days, you're done. You're, you know, you, you don't want to watch another sh- another show. Hey, the only thing I watch after SmackDown is talking smack. The only thing I watch after SmackDown is porn. Wow. On that note. <laughs> anyway. Is that, is that why I crashed the other night? Huh? What? I said, is that why the other crashed the other night? Maybe. Uh, I, I don't watch professional. I like mine amateur. Thank you very much. Oh, my um, bad. Because they're just dialing it in. Anyway, enough about that. See what you made me enough do? Enough about that. Um, yes. I know. I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. Next See what match, you Chris. Do. Next match. To everybody. Next to match. everybody. <laughs> Next match is the Quickly. match that everybody's been waiting to talk about. Mike especially, because he loves Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns mm-hmm. versus Braun Strowman. Now, Mike, before you get carried away and go off on it here for a second, yeah. I got to say, I got to say, everybody here knows... They may not want to admit it. Chuck's already admitted to it earlier. They may not want to admit it, but you know there's no way in the world they were going to put Strowman over on Roman Reigns three weeks before WrestleMania when it's rumored he's going to face The Undertaker. I thought it best. Four weeks before at, Mania? At, or four, I'm sorry, what would I say? 
I missed said that three weeks, four weeks, three weeks, four weeks before Mania. I, you know, I, I, I thought at best it would be a no contest match where they fought outside the ring to a count out maybe or something, and that would be it. So that way both of them kind of kept some dominant look to each other. But there's no way they were going to put him over pinning him right now, building up to <laughs> the big dog claiming his yard. And if you notice at the end of the match, he 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 mouths to him, and they confirmed it after the show. Well, that 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 show with uh, uh, Lawler and the the blonde oh, girl, raw what's her talk. name? Uh, raw talk, yeah. They can Renee it Young. There cause, uh, uh, Renee Young. Lawler asked him. He said, "Did I see correctly? Did I read your lips correctly? That you told him this is my yard?" And he he said yes because you know you get that's the kind of attitude you got to have. This is he comes to work every day. He puts his time in. You know he's the one that's going to be here forever. He's not going anywhere. So he keeps telling people, "This is my yard." And whose yard has it been in the last 20 plus years? It's been the Undertaker's last yard, they said. Almost, thir- last 30. almost 30 years. Yeah. 30 years. So now it's going to lead up to whose yard is it? It's the passing of the torch, Undertaker mm. to Roman Reigns. Mm. So, no. That no. Be, no. That, that, snore. That being snore. said, snore. that being snore. said, and out of the way, snore. Mike, snore. Mike's about to wake up over there in just a second. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's going to wake up in just a second. Because if he doesn't wake up in just a second and pay attention to what's coming his way, he will not see this coming. Now, Mike, wake up and get to the match. I know you love Roman Reigns so much you want to sit there and sing his praises to us right now. Come on. What a debacle. What an Superman punch. Mess. Well, we did learn one thing. We learned one thing about Roman Reigns' Superman punch. It's like the cult in Supernatural. It can kill most things, but it can't kill everything. And Braun Strowman is one of the five things that the Superman punch obviously just can't kill. Because he had to do the spear to win. The Superman punch just wasn't going to get it. That being said, this match made no sense. Uh, Strowman is, has been on top of the world He's been dominant, and they put him up against somebody who has been beat multiple times. And not just beat, but beat badly multiple times. And they they, they, they didn't make him look weak, but they didn't, they didn't just continue that, what it should be. Roman has a really bright future, and I'm really, and I'm sorry, I don't think Roman Reigns does. I don't believe that he will go as far as anyone thinks he's going to go. I don't think he really has the talent to do it, and the crowd hates him. You you can try and you can push it all you want, but eventually, it's, when you figure out it's not going to work and you try something else and it's too late, he's going to wind up on TNA with Alberto Patron. You know, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take TNA because they're getting more and more people come in. That's another story for another day, mind you. But you yeah. know, if it ever comes down to it, I would watch that because they're getting better as we go along the way here. The the thing with Roman Reigns also, you got to remember. Uh, no, not Roman Reigns. Braun Strowman. I'm sorry. Uh, when Braun Strowman came off the top rope, well, that flying splash. I was like, Oh my God, are you kidding me? Is he gonna do this? and he missed, you got to look at that as being one devastating thing and knocking the air out of him at least, and then he turned around right into a spear. The Superman punch was never a finisher anyway. It was the leading up yeah. to the finisher. So finisher. the fact that he didn't – that's right, exactly. So the fact that Strowman missed that big splash from the top rope and took a spear immediately when he got up, that's just too much for him at that point, I guess, and that's where you get the clean win. If he hadn't have gone up there yeah. and done the thing on the top rope, and that never happened – just that spear alone might not have done it because it didn't do it in the past, the way they wrote it out and everything. So I don't know what they would have done there. I guess the, the only way to make it look like he was beatable at that point to get beat was to have him miss that top rope splash and then take the spear immediately afterwards for the devastation of it. Hmm. Well, here's the thing. They still, there still could have been a way. Because, let's face it, they were counting people out. It wasn't a notice qualification match. So things could have happened to make this kid still look like uh, an animal. And the problem is 
What do you do now? What do you do with Braun Strowman? Where do you go with him? He's got n- nothing, nothing scheduled. There's no feud scheduled that I know of, and he's not even on the WrestleMania bill. That's that's the biggest indication of why I knew that they were going to put Reigns over. Nah, you put him in WrestleMania, you make him win the Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Is, this, is that even a thing now? Nobody's even said anything about that. No, yeah, they, they, were, they, they, they have brought a, it up. It's a pre-show thing. Oh, it's they a have? It's pre-show right. thing. Yeah, it's a, uh, I, I don't know. But they were talking about somebody else game, possibly man. winning that this year, too, though. I mean, that's already been brought up a couple yeah, weeks who, ago as far as uh, who was they, who they wanted to win that, I believe. Mm-hmm. It's somebody else well, from NXT again, wasn't it? <clears throat> you know, they brought Corbin up from NXT, and he won. There's somebody else from NXT. I thought they was coming up. They wanted to win that. Yeah, but you can't keep well, having NXT man. guys win it. Can't, but I mean that the size has to stop WWE in the past from repeating what they've done. Well, but Think Cesaro was it? Cesaro was Cesaro like when he won. He was the first one to win, right? Correct. He right. Was the first one to win, and they did nothing with it. Just like with, with Wade Barrett when he won the King of the Ring, they did nothing with it. All right. That's what I'm saying. They hold on to Baron. Sure. All Baron Corbin has is he's like the Andre Giant King of the Ring winner, whereas Cesaro, we don't World even World. mention right. that. Yeah, but that's just like the Big Show. The Big Show essentially won it because Andre the Giant. Enough said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they're probably like, look, look he kind of had to win it. Like, Andre was the king of, of uh, the, the Battle Royals. Yeah, he was king of the battle royal. Well, he he never lost a battle royal at, uh, until obviously later on in life. But like, he won every battle royal he stepped in. Like it, you might as well have just given him the money. Too. But anyway, that's my point. Bottom line is, you have Ron Strowman, and that's all well and good, and he's gonna throw people over. And I mean, what the hell? You're just gonna give, give him give him. But what I'm saying is, is, don't waste this kid's talent. He does have talent if you let him do these things. If you let him, you know, I mean, him doing that kip up is a huge. Him going to the top row, huge. Let him do that stuff. I don't understand. Like, let him go. Let him be him. But uh, they don't. I, they're I, not I utilizing. Agree. They're, they're not utilizing. The, you. Here, yeah. Here's the thing, in, in my opinion, with this. Well, I don't know. Are you done? Are, are you got more to add, or no, I, I don't want to interrupt. No. Okay. No. No. Please go ahead. They. They, okay, so on Raw, when they took, which I thought, I don't know if they, they screwed with the turnbuckle in the midst of, you know, commercial break or whatever, or what, because that night on Raw, Monday night, I've seen people hitting that turnbuckle, and nothing happened to it. He threw yeah. Roman Reigns into that turnbuckle, and so with that, that was a lot of force to throw a man like that, to show him getting speared through the wall like that, and to get back up and show Roman Reigns look at him like, what the fuck? I just gave this man everything I had and speared him through a wall, a barricade, and he's getting back up. Okay? You have to look at it yeah. this way. Undertaker, probably his last mania. Probably, he's probably retiring this year. Kane, Kane's going to phase out this year, more than likely. Okay? You don't ha- uh, the big show, his contract is up in February. Okay, who do you have as big men left on this roster? You've got Luke Harper, who can move. Okay, you've got Eric Rowan, who's going to be back by at least SummerSlam because he had a torn rotator cuff, but he's just he's going to phase out himself. Okay, and then you've got Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman's going to stick around for quite a while. All right, he's going to end up whether. He's going to end up with gold, and it's probably going to be main event gold, whether it's Raw or SmackDown. Okay, so he's going to, he's going to be a mainstay, and I, I feel this. But the, my problem is, well, with the match, last time I've ever seen a big man like that fly off the top rope was Kane with his clothesline. And mm. Braun Strowman jumped off that rope probably higher than I've ever seen RVD and Eddie Guerrero do a frog splash. He got a lot of height on that, and he's he's fast. I, I mean, he went over that top rope when he went to do that big boot, and he missed with a lot of force and a lot of velocity. 
I, I actually mm-hmm. think that he legit got injured. But, you know, the match, it was... It, it I feel it ended the wrong way. It, it should have ended in no contest, more or less, because now you're showing... Again, it, again it's showing Roman Reigns as being the favorite. Let's, let's jam everybody down Roman Reigns' throat. Okay, Vince, you need to get off Roman Reigns' dick because it's just it, nobody wants Roman Reigns. And they should have left it as a, a no contest or a double count out or, or just they brawl somewhere and, and something happens. But they should have kept it, like, like Mike said, they, they didn't, they more or less, they didn't fully take away from you know, showing the dominance of Braun Strowman because he took it to Roman Reigns. But they also didn't really show the full dominance that they showed against everybody else. And now you're you're essentially going to make Braun Strowman look weak to an extent. And, and that's why I feel that they're going to fail at. Well, here's so the thing, too. They should have. They just went wrong with it. Here's the thing, too. My friend JJ hit me up and he said, announcers are funny. They really, they're really trying to build up Roman as if he just, uh, just accomplished something unremarkable. Or, I mean, he accomplished something remarkable. And that's exactly what they did. Look at what Roman's done. He's done this. He's done that. He's, he's, he's beaten the odds. He's blah, 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 blah. No, it really wasn't that kind of contest to me. It really wasn't. I don't know. It just didn't do anything for me. So, and again, it falls no, down to I, the Big Show and Braun Strowman put on a better match than Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. And when you got big guys like that putting on a better match than the entire night of this pay-per-view, I'm sorry, but there's a problem with that. And I, I got to tell you guys, you know, we, were, we, were mentioning earlier, we were mentioning earlier that uh, Andre the Giant Battle Royal tournament you guys brought up. And um, would you believe... I just looked it up what I was reading the other day, and I found it again. Uh, the guy from um, the NXT is not the real favorite, but he was there, was there was a guy from NXT that was thrown in there. But would you believe with the five names mentioned, Braun Strowman's nowhere in that five list? Nowhere. The five guys somebody's, that they say... Somebody's that, on drugs then. That, that, that it must be. The, the five, here are the five names mentioned. Two of them are believable. One of them a little bit more than the other because he's on his way out, like you mentioned earlier. Kane is one of the names. Maybe he wins on his okay. way out the door. Rusev is the second one. That's believable. That, that could happen. Here are the three names that I just don't see winning it, but are on the list. Mojo Rawley. Yeah, Seriously. I can see that. I, 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 I could, I, I can I could see, see it because they're going to, they want to try to give him a push. He's not a bad guy in the ring. He can move. Uh, he's got power. I don't know. He's got the, he's got the fan following. But it's a long shot. Uh, it's a long shot to me. Too long, a long shot. And here, here's even an even longer shot to me. Ty Dillinger. In a, in, in, a, in a match full of huge guys, you throw Ty, Ty Dillinger. Dillinger. Just, I'm not yeah, a but that's, Ray, that's Ray Mysterio syndrome, in my opinion. He's the small guy, and winning a and winning a battle royal. And it's not a matter of like the royal. I think I think Ty Dillinger winning the Andre the Giant over the top battle royal. It's probably more believable than Ty Dillinger winning the Royal Rumble. Yeah, and they, they brought him into that. That's why it was that. And then Apollo Crews being the other one. Nope. I, I can't get behind him. No. I, I really no. can't. Behind he's him. that guy that it, it's essentially he's got more mic skills. Now, there you go. Ahmed Johnson version 3.0. The only difference well, is Apollo, yeah. Jews has, uh, Apollo Crews has charisma. And Apollo Crews actually has mic skills, but he stands there and smiles like Ezekiel Jackson did. Like it's just, I, I, I can't get behind Apollo Crews. I, I just can't. It's a shame because he's super talented in the ring. He is incredibly oh. talented in the ring. He's, it's, it's he's a shame. Up with, I hate he's up there that. with Cesaro in terms of yeah, in-ring skills. Yeah, he just has that. He's just so good. Now, get him with Ty. Ty, he tells you, I'm, I'm not a fan of him. I just don't see the appeal. Me personally. I've seen him wrestle. He's nothing special. So if they gave it to him, fine, whatever. I I like Mojo because, let me go this way, gentlemen. Let's just say years ago, we're, we're as old as we are now, years ago in 1985, somebody comes up to us and says, hey, 
there's going to be this guy, right? He's going to go running to the ring like an animal with heavy metal music <laughs> in the background. He's going to jump on the, the ropes. He's going to he's gonna shake him like a ma- maniac. He's going to have, like, ties on his biceps. He's going to have makeup on his face, and they're going to call him the ultimate warrior, and he's going to go over. What would you say? Like, seriously. You probably, back, come, back, yeah. then, uh, that, back then, I would have believed it, because look at the era no. that we were in. We were in a massive era of gimmicks. No, but listen to me. Okay, let's, let's do this even better, one better, okay? We're talking 1985 now. It's not so much gimmicky. Gimmicky's coming. Let's say we're NWA guys. Okay? Right. We're NWA we're used guys. We're the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. And he's getting on there talking Dream, about Dusty the hard Rhodes. times day. And he's talking yeah, about the playoffs. And he's talking about the yeah, full talking about on the Tully Blanchard. Yeah, we're, we're talking about that. And we're not, we're, we don't know anything about the Yanks that are up there. We, right. we knew about Backlund and Hogan. That's about it. And we, you're telling me some guys coming in. So now you now today, present day, you mean to tell me that we we can't get behind a, a Mojo Raleigh? A guy every time he moves, you move he moves with you and moves with you and he's got that energy and he he's that guy that just gets up and he's like, Let's go. I I can get behind that guy. It's just the way you way you you move him around. It's the way you pre- what the you way can, you present him. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's all because about presentation. Was, Christopher, Christopher, may I add something? I, I want I want to correct something that uh, Ray from NJ said um, about big men in the business. Big men in the business. Luke Harper is not a big man. By uh, any means. Did you no, see him stand next to? He is. Did you see him stand next to AJ? He's six foot eight. He's tall. No, he's, he's six tall. foot five, and he's two hundred and seventy-five pounds. He is the same height as Randy Orton, and he weighs twenty-five pounds more than Randy Orton. He's, uh, he he's, looks he's like he's a tall. big guy then. But he's tall. He is not a big guy. He's, but he's tall. not a big guy. He's not he's big. Tall. Eric Rowan is six foot eight, three fifteen. That's getting bigger, but neither one of them are 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 Taker or Kane big at six ten apiece. Right, there's but a, you take out Undertaker, a, Kane, and Rowan, that leaves you with Harper and Strowman, and that leaves you with Harper as because depend because now it is. If you're going to call if you're going guys, to call so Luke Harper dead. a big man, you have to call Randy Orton a big man. Okay, but here's the thing. Luke Harper moves. He, he you look at the way he is. So does Orton and, and, because he's not yeah. big. He's just tall. He's <laughs> Orton, six foot five, two fifty. Harper, six foot five, two seventy five. Twenty five okay. pounds. Again, right, Twenty five pounds. All, He's not big. Again, it's all it's all about presentation. No, what you, it is they, is that he looks like Bruiser Brody, so everybody thinks he's big. He is. That's what big. I was about to say. I was about to he say the same thing. He looks like well, Bruiser yeah. Brody, he, and it, that's why everybody feel. thinks he's big. It's it, it's the feel well, you get of watching him on TV because when you see him, the ones who remember Bruiser Brody, we have it in our minds already. Man. That's Bruiser Brody's second coming right there. Look how big he is. Look how much he, how well he moves. And then when you oh, sit down, you, you look at the facts of it, and you yeah. see everything. You're like, wow, he's yeah. only that hey. big? Really? Well, hey, this, hey, this hey. Brings, this... hey. Hey, hey, there's a the pattern, man. How about Big Cass? Very much forget Big, big Cass. Cass. Uh, big Cass. I, you know what? I did forget about Big Cass, unfortunately. And it's, and it's getting Thank to you, the point JJ. that it's sad that I forgot about Big Cass because – I, I, I essentially I forgot about Big Cass. He's not making an impact. Well, as as a tag team, he's not going to really anyway. I mean, until he splits right. them up, he's not going to make no big impact as a. I mean, he now. is a true seven footer. He is a true seven footer. No, he's not but, true. He's not a true seven, seven footer. He's, six he's not a true ten. seven footer. He's six foot ten. Well, you that's have to remember, about true, in, in, yeah. in, in, when they when they announce these guys. Like, the Big Show's not seven foot two. The Big Show's only seven foot. The Undertaker's not six foot eleven. He's six foot ten. They're not. They it is now. He's shrunk. At, it enter, they announce him at, at about an inch or two taller than what they really are. It's well, the NBA Taker, syndrome. Taker was six eleven, but you got to remember, he's old. He shrunk. Just like Hogan oh, yeah. used to be six. Yeah, Hogan used to up. be six eight. But he shrunk. Well, that's like Ray because Mysterio. He's old. They used to announce Ray Mysterio at five foot nine. No, he's only five foot seven. All right, so now you know, but, all big but guys aside. Quick, speaking of big guys, yeah. well, wait, real quick. Speaking of big guys, look at the Andre the Giant Battle Royal the first year, okay? 
Who who was the runner up? The Big Show, right? Big Show wins the following year. Okay, Baron Corbin wins the third one. Who was runner up in that one? Kane. So I could see Kane possibly. There, it's another accolade that they could add to it. Just say here, you know what? We're not going to give you a championship anymore. We're not. You're you're you're, you're past that. But here's one last thing to to add to your resume for the Hall of Fame, for your list of accolades. That's just like Jericho. I don't see Jericho winning any, not a Rumble, not a Money in the Bank, no other belts. But you know what? You've been solid for us. You've done us this. You know, you've been great. Let's at least give you the United States Championship, a belt that's been eluding you. They're going to give these guys something on their way out. And I think the Andre the Battle Royal, you're right. It could be the big one for Kane. Especially right, so, a guy that was dominant in the Royal Rumble and, and for so long and never won. Right. And so the big guys aside, we got like 23 minutes or 24 minutes. I'm sorry. We got two more matches to go, and I'm going to let Ray get his say on the first uh, first couple of matches there, too. Uh, the last one we know won't take long to talk about, but the one before that was Bailey versus Charlotte. Now, we kind of we were kind of talking back and forth, Mike and Chuck and I, during the toward the end of this match. Uh, I was kind of razzing them a little bit, trying to get them all built up for the, <laughs> the podcast. I'll admit, I was, I was razzing them a little bit. But um, there was this interesting point made that uh, when Sasha ran down and she got thrown into she she went at, she went after Charlotte on the floor and then got thrown into the ring. Even though she left the ring, she kind of attacked her in a sense outside. Where was the disqualification? This wasn't a no disqualification match they were having, was it? Nope. No. So where, where was, where was the because, DQ? I, think I mean, because they Charlotte, DQ, I think it's because Charlotte put her hands on Sasha first. It kind matter. of was like a null and but void. It's still, it's still, but it, technically, if you doesn't look at matter. it, technically, it's still outside interference that it came up down there. There shouldn't have been any physical it's, contact of any kind between the right. two at that point. Uh, if, we so there should, if we know Charlotte, we know Charlotte is going to bring it up on Raw. Right, and there should, and that, and that might be the whole point of why they didn't do it, too, Mike. I was thinking that earlier. That might be well, the thing is that if she had got be, the disqualification, she would have had her streak still intact. But, but she this lost could that be streak. another Dusty finish. I thought about this afterwards. This could be just like when, when Dusty won the title. And because we all know that Bailey's a big Dusty Rhodes fan. It could be just like when Dusty won the title and the horsemen, there was the outside interference, and they came in and they reversed the decision and gave the belt back to Flair. If they were going to do that, though, that would have been on Monday Night Raw when she won it. There was no true outside interference this time. She didn't reach in they physically were going to in do, Charlotte in any way. They were going to do that, Chris. But Naomi got hurt, and they had to strip her of the title on SmackDown. So they scrubbed yeah, so it. They're not they going to do, take, they're not gonna do it twice in one week. The right, they didn't want to take the belt from both women. But can you right, see them doing that same thing? Give it back to the original champion. But, it, but she's not going to lose her belt. She'll lose the win. But she won't lose the belt. Well, here's my thing on this match. You know, that's what the, that's what, how I could see it coming. They can turn around and say, "Look, the, I should have never lost that match. I should have won because Sasha Sasha interfered." Okay, and I'm just going to say, Dana Brooke was. I, I think Dana Brooke. I still a fan. I'm still a fan of hers. Just saying, but no, I, I think and I think they screwed over the end of that match. They sh- and I was waiting oh. for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. When Sasha hugged Bailey, and all of a sudden you've seen Sasha step back and put her hand on her kind of like on her face with her arm under her other arm. I was waiting for Sasha to blast Bailey from behind, take uh-huh. that belt, hold it in the air, and stare at the mania sign. And they fucked up with it, and they didn't do it. I knew they weren't going to. As soon as I saw her, as soon as I saw Charlotte on the ground crying. Kind of giving her that moment. If she had left, she wasn't there. Then I would have, I would have said, yeah. But I knew that they, that they didn't. The thing that bothers me about that match, because it should have been a whole hell of a lot better than it was. It was a horrible what? fucking match. Botched. It was, it was so bad. bad. It was botch mania. Yeah, Bailey botched. I don't wrestle. even. Well, I can't understand. Listen, those guys, those girls have wrestled each other countless times. I don't understand how they don't know. Like each other's breath at that point. I don't understand that little thing she was trying to do in the corner, screwing up. Yeah, what was that? The, I, I am I am fully 
at the point now where I believe that Bailey just can't fucking wrestle. She shouldn't be where she's at at all. Because I know Charlotte Charlotte can wrestle. She can wrestle Sasha Banks. She can wrestle uh any she can wrestle Bailey. She can wrestle anybody. She can but wrestle Bailey, Becky Lynch. Bailey can't yeah. wrestle. That that's it. I mean her her move set's I, weak. And, Mike. Yeah. Did, did, did you did you hear what the announcer said when she missed the elbow in the corner when she had her hanging yeah. upside down for like five yeah. minutes? Yeah. Uh, I don't I'm think really she could sure have that if she wanted to. Uh, I think yeah. she kind of missed some of that. Uh, yeah, that was she didn't crazy. do anything. Well, what could you the two, do? The two How things you that come stuck that? out in my mind with that match was Bailey's elbow off the top rope. That was that was a nice elbow. And when she sure. had Charlotte upside down, I literally thought Charlotte's leg was bent in half because I've never seen anybody put in a tree of woe like that. And their foot is wrapped into the middle rope like that. I've never seen that. And that was actually pretty cool. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah. Mike, I'm, I'm agreeing with Mike a little bit. Now, she, now, I know she knows how to wrestle. Don't get me wrong. I just don't think she she's One. good enough to be on the, the grand stage. I can, I, I, can really read a, I can read a book and technically know how to split the atom. It doesn't mean that I can fucking do it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm over Bailey's gimmick already. I, I just, I really yeah. am. It's, it's, it's played out. She's not well, going to last. She'll be the first. She'll be the first one out of the four horsewomen to leave the WWE because she's going to phase out. And I think the only reason she's getting the push is because of Daniel Bryan syndrome. She's got the, she's the underdog. She's the one that's wanted to do it forever, just like Daniel Bryan. You know, the fans are behind her, and that's that's all it is. And it's just, it's, it's got to stop. And, and that's all I have to this say about was, that match. This was, in my mind, this was the worst match of the night. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not considering the two filler matches. This was the worst match of the night. No, I disagree. Okay. I think, I think, um, I think Strowman and and um, and Roman Reigns is the worst of the night. To be quite honest. Yeah, oh, but I, I think, think Strowman not... Reigns had more yeah. had better spots in it than Charlotte Bailey did. Yeah, it was. Yeah, but I think uh, there was less botching. Know. Roman yeah. actually uh, had a match that was less botched. I don't even think Roman really I... botched in that match. No. And that's. I rare. think you're all wrong. All of y'all are wrong. The worst match of the night is the next one that we got to talk about. Oh no! And that because was we, that we was Goldberg and Kevin Owens. That was we Goldberg and Kevin Owens. That's the difference. That was the worst match of the night. Gonna, I mean, I'm it wasn't even a match. Right now. I called it. I, I'm going to say it right now. I called it. Squash. Well, I, I was really hoping it wouldn't I be. Didn't, I, but I mean, no, the, I way they did it, I didn't the way that they did it I was didn't. all right, but I hate the squash, though. No, listen listen to me. I Let's put it this way. When it came to this particular match, the, the thing was, like, I – and look, did I not tell you it was going to it was gonna happen this way, that one of the – one of the – the two big oafs were going to have the title. But then I kept hearing, I, I talked myself out of this whole thing. And, and then with Kevin Owens, I was like, well, there's no way he's going to let him just like squash him like that. That's why they did what they did. You know, and then all of a sudden he's, you know, here comes Kevin, I mean, here comes uh, Jericho. Jericho. And what happened? And the only reason why it was a squash match is because of Jericho. I mean, think and that's it. the only reason that made the squash okay. Yeah, because yeah. it adds it adds to it adds to Jericho Owens at Mania, and I mean we already know that Kevin Owens is going to win at Mania. We already know that Kevin Owens is going to become the United States Champion, and it's I'm okay with it. I really am. I'm not, and I'm okay with how that match finished in terms. Of if it is going to be a squash match, let it happen that way. Let it happen with the distraction. Don't just go in there and let it be fucking Goldberg Lesnar Survivor Series all over again. Well, I, I'm not okay with it at all, and the reason being is that you're going to tell me you're going to take Kevin Owens, who has been probably the best heel that you've had in the company for a while, hold the belt the way he does in and outside of the ring. He carries that persona on the Twitter. He he's he's arguing back and forth with people. There was something I sent the guys earlier where there was a picture Kevin Owens tweeted of the seats around ringside and there there are Goldberg's faces on the seats and he said, I see I'm not the only person that's sitting on Goldberg's face later tonight is what he said. 
And I mean that and that, the one that, that Kevin Owens stuff. tweeted with the cats on his lap where he beat his yes. nine year old in fucking Mario yeah. Kart. Yeah. It's great. Now, all that. All that stuff he does, plus what he does on the actual show. And not to mention they just had it come out to where they made him drop the whole Jericho thing basically as the best friend thing so he could be a more serious champ, basically. Just to drop it a week or two later to Goldberg? Who's gonna Listen, turn around and I've drop never... it at WrestleMania? I've never and you're, and then, again, and then you're, Goldberg, and then you're gonna Goldberg's put the US belt on him. So you're you're gonna well, drop his again, world I, title for a US title? Now wait a minute. It falls under it falls under Goldberg is leaving. They're gonna give Goldberg one last thing, like I said, with Kane and Jericho and everything like that. It's gonna be one last accolade as respect. Um it, and it, all Goldberg's gonna be as a transition because they're not gonna take a heel, put him against the heel and take the belt off the heel. And I have never seen a heel become an even greater heel like with Kevin Owens turning on Jericho like that it just made him an even greater heel that's all that's what they did and then like you said right. put a United States belt on him why exactly that's my problem why are you going to take who's been the best world champion you've had in the while as a heel he's a better heel champion than Rollins was because although I like that Rollins it's, it's mm-hmm. part of mm-hmm. the master plan gentlemen there's got to be a master around Kevin Owens regardless. This, this is my this is my theory. I'm going to get my my wrestling Nostradamus going here. Go ahead. Goldberg is going to beat Lesnar at WrestleMania. Nope. Yeah. Yes. And then Monday night after, Finn Balor is going to beat Goldberg and take the title. <laughs> no. That doesn't make sense. Well, Lesnar will be no because Finn Balor is probably going to face Triple H at Mania um, because they've Why is both Finn Balor facing they, they, Triple H because I don't think Rollins is going to be cleared. Triple H has already been booked for live house shows, one of which is in Buffalo or White Plains, New York. I'm sorry, White Plains, New York. That Finn Balor is also on the card for, and Finn Balor is the backup plan. But I see Lesnar beating Goldberg, and they're they're trying to make a dominant authority of big strong heels i.e. Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens. You keep the belt around Kevin Owens. You eventually set up for Lesnar versus Kevin Owens. Oh, I'm sorry, Why? not Lesnar versus Kevin Owens. Lesnar versus Samoa Joe, and they're going to put the Universal title around Samoa Joe so they have two people in the new, brand new monster heel authority with gold. I wouldn't be messed up um, with Samoa Joe being champion. I really wouldn't. That's not the problem. I don't have a problem with Samoa Joe getting the belt eventually. I don't. I like Samoa Joe. It's it's just the way this is folding out right now. I mean, true, we can't see what's going to happen. Remember, remember when there was all that all that fuss people had with Royal Rumble, and the next night Monday Night Raw was. Awesome. You no, know, we're mm-hmm. having this talk tonight about how this is not working out right. It's not panning out right. Maybe tomorrow night on Raw, we'll be giving some, they'll, they'll shed some light on a more of a direction where this is going with some things. Well, other than the obvious. Right. It is, of it is, the, final, it is the final push for Mania. It is the final right. push for Mania. And I mean, and, and we, we know, well, we know KO is going to fight Jericho at WrestleMania. That's going to be a given. But it's going to be stupid. Just to, I mean, what, you know they're going to put the U.S. title on him because Jericho is leaving. So they're going to put the U.S. title back on him. So he's basically been demoted from world champ to U.S. champ, and he's going to sit there and like that, basically. Now, I'm sure I'm sure he's getting paid a lot of money. He'd probably care less either way if he's world title or U.S. title, as long as he's They, chance, did, the, they did the same thing with Ambrose. Money. They gave him the title, and then they put the Intercontinental strap around him. They did. Same story, just different brand, basically. Like, right. But... I mean, I, only but, only um, Kevin Owens is gonna do some do more with the U.S. belt than Ambrose is gonna do with any of his title reigns. No, because Ambrose is gonna lose that belt to Baron Corbin at WrestleMania. They're gonna give Baron the cor- They're gonna give Baron a title. Well, match. yeah, that uh, yeah, I can see. And, and that definitely I can see. And let's see what that. Oh, Tim Iverson. Oh, that's right. I the forgot. Same, Baron, the best Corbin, thing. Baron Corbin's another big guy. He's like six foot seven or something. Yeah. To see, um, he <laughs> Tim Tim Iverson said the best thing about him. He said that Tim, that that Baron Corbin reminds him of a really pissed off short order cook. Wow. Yeah, but it works. Like a dishwasher, you know. So pissed he, off he, dishwasher. He, you're you're telling me he's SpongeBob Tall Pants? SpongeBob Tall Pants. Oh Jesus. 
Light yourself uh, on fire. Please. So essentially, we've all come to the conclusion that the main event was the, the it was a terrible ending. I think we can all agree on that much. Uh, let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and drop back to the beginning. Let's go and drop back to the beginning because we got ten minutes. So we got nine minutes left, guys. Nine and a half. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Go back to the beginning and uh, Ray, give, give us your thoughts on Samoa Joe, Sami Zayn, the club, and Enzo and Cass and Banks uh, over Jax. Uh, I think Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn put on a hell of a match for what it was worth. I understand that there. It seems like they're essentially burying Sami Zayn for what reason? I don't know because he can wrestle. But they're making Samoa Joe look very dominant, which is good. And I think, all in all, I think it was a great match. For for what for a starter match, I think they pulled off, pulled it off well, starting the pay per view off on the actual pay per view itself with that match. Um, Enzo and Cass and the club. It it was a good finish for what it was worth because it's going to lead into their match in Mania. It's going to be a rematch at Mania. I can I'm already calling it now. Um, I think it, I think it was good. Again, for what it was worth, it wasn't the best. It just it was it was one of them mediocre filler matches that you, you wanted to watch to see what was going to happen. Um, Nia Jax and Sasha, uh, it, it's it's Rey Mysterio syndrome. You got the small person beating. Essentially, you got Mysterio beating the giant. You know what I mean? It's. And they're, they're, they shouldn't be pushing Nia Jax. She's not a wrestler. She's the only reason they're giving her any kind of push is because of who she's related to. And I want to make a statement: the pre-show. Oh, Alicia Fox. Just, just want to put that out there. Alicia Fox. I missed it. I missed it. So. Oh, you have I to watch. She looked, she looked hot. Oh wait a minute! Was that but, the Swan and what you call it match? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, Swan and Tazawa versus a Kendrick and Dar. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a pretty good. That was a pretty good match too, actually. It was. It, it was, was right. and I think that should have been on the. I think that should have been on the card over you know, uh, over Banks and Jax. But mm-hmm. all in all, that's that's my opinion on those first three matches. It just, I really wasn't impressed with Sasha and Nia Jax. Uh, especially with the quake drop, um, <laughs> and out of the three matches, I think Samoa Joe was better out of the three. I would have to say Neville was the best match of the night. Then it goes Samoa Joe and Sami Zayn next, and then the rest I could care less about. All right, guys, seven minutes left. I want to ask you guys one last question, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call your name out and go in order to get your answer on it here. With the future yeah. of WWE, basically. I know Vince has always been big on big guys, but you've got greatness in Seth Rollins. You've got Finn Balor. Uh, Kevin Owens can really kind of go both ways. He moves like a smaller guy, although he's not really quite a big guy. Um, With people like this that you've got going forward in the future, what do you see them doing for the World Heavyweight title in the big picture overall? So, um, Ray, go ahead and jump in for about a minute or two there. Are we talking about the one that's on SmackDown, or are we talking about the Universal <clears throat> Champion? Are we considering talk, both of them, I, I, or no? I'm, I'm talking about Raw for Universal Champion right now, because as it is right now, these guys are all on Raw, basically. Okay, so um, it's a tough call with Kevin Owens moving down, you know, to mid card, and Rollins being hurt right now. Because realistic, we really don't know if he can go like he did, because it's hard to come back from. I mean, Triple H is Triple H is Triple H. He pulled both quad, tore both quads, and he still can do it. Um, I just, I don't see Rollins really doing much more. And I think once you move guys up like Bobby Roode and, you know, um, some, now you got Samoa Joe up there. And soon enough, within the next five years, um, Vince is going to be out of the picture. And you're going to see more NXT guys fully, you know, making a mainstay, and they're going to be the ones to become the champions. These guys that were in the WWE and never touched NXT, they're soon going to fizzle out as world champions, and it's going to be a far and few between. So uh, Chuck, I think it's essentially going to come down to NXT uh, guys coming from NXT battling for the Universal Championship. It's a good question. I don't fucking know. Because to be quite honest, everything is, it's, it, things have been such a clusterfuck 
I mean, up until this point, I was pretty much right in everything I said was going to happen, except for uh, Royal Rumble. Um, and I should have stayed with my instincts. It's all a matter of who's going to get the title at WrestleMania is going to be what what tells the tale. You know, um, Goldberg may be um, Brock Lesnar. It may be one of those things where he's like, no, we're not going to pass the torch because, hey, look, I'm going out. There's no reason to pass the torch. I'm going to go out and do my thing, and Lesnar is going to be fine. Um, and it, and this, this massive heel um, uh, stable that's coming, uh, that we know is at least going to be Samoa Joe and and Kevin uh, Kevin Owens. Um, we'll see. I think Samoa Joe is going to get it, just like uh, uh, Ray had said. At the end of the day, he's going to get it, and he's going to pr- be protected, and it's going to almost be like the tough guy Ric Flair thing going on. And Triple H is going to be at the helm. I'm going to see. I'm going to say that he's going to be the guy uh, as far as face. Finn's got to come back. Finn's got to win. Like, that has to figure... Like, between Finn and Seth Rollins and all the other guys in between, it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be interesting. I don't... I, I would love to say that I know what it is, but I don't. I have no clue. It's a clusterfuck. We'll see what happens. Hey, Mike? <clears throat> well, I'm going to take a different route with this and say that the future of the uh, Universal title really depends on the ratings of Raw and what happens Mm. there. We all know, especially while Vince is still kicking around, how big he is on Raw being the number one show. After WrestleMania, I think we'll have a big shakeup in the rosters. And I have an idea we're going to see AJ Styles on Raw because he's a, a reason, he's a big part of the reason people are tuning into SmackDown. He's not the only reason, but he's a big part of the reason. So, I could foresee him a year and a half with a universal title run. Um, and it all just depends on who else is moved around and where the chips fall after that. Because Raw ratings have been steadily dropping and SmackDowns have been, well, they're not great, but they're not uh, taking that nosedive that Monday Night Raw has been. And that drives Vince McMahon crazy. So I can see that uh, there'll be a definite roster shakeup soon. I don't know if I'll see the belt on Samoa Joe or not. It would, uh, it like, it all depends on if he can draw a crowd. I was thinking the same thing you were, Mike, and we got uh, about two minutes left here, so I'm going to wrap it up here real quick. But we, I was thinking the same thing you were about after WrestleMania because they've been talking about the possibility for a few months now of Roman Reigns going to SmackDown and AJ being sent to Raw or maybe another kind of shakeup of some sort. Not necessarily another um, you know, draft of any kind, just like some trades between the brands is what I've been hearing. So it's kind of hard to say 100% for sure that all these names I mentioned will be on Raw in the long run. You may not see uh, Seth Rollins in Raw. You may not have um, Finn Balor. He may be sent off to SmackDown before he comes back and makes his debut back at SmackDown for all we know. And there could be some other people sitting back over to Raw instead. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes in the long run, I guess. Um, basically, uh, we're going to wrap everything up here. A little, little over a minute left to go. But next week, uh, we'll come back on. We'll talk about the aftermath of the pay-per-view or Monday Night Raw and see what SmackDown has to offer. Um, there's a few things that's, been, that's going on right now with TNA Impact, or just Impact Wrestling now I'd like to talk about next week as well. To kind of get them some time in there. Uh, they're making some improvements that I like to see, and there's a possibility of a couple of names signing with them here soon. Uh, and you can't forget about the shakeup in Ring of Honor and exactly, Hardy's I was and Bubba well. Ray showing up. Right, Ring of Honor's another thing. So we've got some exciting stuff going on in wrestling right now uh, that, that that's going to be happening, and I want to bring up a few independent names I'd like to see throwing up in one of those two places as well. But uh, thanks to everybody who's been listening. Uh, Ray, thanks for calling in again this week. Uh, for those who are listening, make sure you go to YouTube and subscribe and like the page, share it with your friends and everything. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and the lovely Twitter. I'm going to stop hating on Twitter, but I'm going to stop pushing it, too. That being said, uh, you guys have a great weekend. Uh, thanks for making a great show tonight, and I'll see you guys next week. And, and, and KJ, I will see you Saturday, my friend.
Cool. I'll be there. Hey, no, well, no, man, right. you guys have uh, to give us an update on that next week, too, when you come back and see how that goes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talk to you guys next week.